Yes. I'm a John Deere guy. I hope that goes over. I already signed my contract. <laughs> uh, always been a John Deere guy. Uh, my cousin who uh, operates our big ranch switched over to Case IH, so uh, we have interesting Thanksgiving talks, but uh, I've, I've always been a John Deere guy. <laughs> Okay, Bill, um, obviously, every Husker fan wants to talk football. And after what you saw last night, where is this program right now? Well, again, um, I've got to dive into it and, and have a chance to sit down with Mike and, uh, and get a feel for you know, what his long-range plan is. And, and sometimes you've got to get a, a feel for a short range because the season's half over. And uh, what are the injuries? Uh, what is your uh, recruiting philosophy? Uh, are you thinking of changing your scheme, defense, or your whole plan, offense? Uh, I am a football guy. I, I, I came into the industry that way, and I, I, I think I still know quite a bit about it. So I want to get a feel from Mike uh, on a lot of those things, and personnel, and really the strength of the conference. Um, I'm going to look forward to that. How big is patience in this process? Uh, knowing the landscape of college football, you said it yourself, has changed dramatically over the last quarter century. Well, uh, Husker fans who are so passionate uh, deserve to be uh, associated with a program that's in the mix. Um, I know we've got Ohio State, we've got Michigan, we've got Penn State, and some other fine programs, but uh, Nebraska's rich tradition needs to be back and mentioned in those same same conversations. So that's that's going to be our our goal, and uh, and hopefully we can get there. Is this something that you've looked at for a while with a maybe a, a you know like a, a curious eye, saying, "Look at Nebraska someday if this ever happens." Yeah, I had a, a reporter stop me out, out um, gosh, about an hour ago and said. How long have you had an interest in Nebraska? And I turned over my shoulder and said, about 25 years. And, and again, it's, a, it's, it's one of the top jobs. And uh, uh, I, I, I'm proud of what we've accomplished everywhere. Uh, we've had to go uh, about our business and the other ones because they needed total rebuilding in most cases. Um, so I'm not going to say this is a luxury, but it's good to know the resources are there. The facilities, for the most part, are all built and wonderful. With, and, and I can't mention enough about the fans. So, hey, I'm, I'm excited. And I can really now concentrate on that competitive piece. And that's what we'll go right to work on. You talked about the number of, of coaches you've hired since you were at, yeah. when you were at Washington State. When you go about, whether it's coaches you have on, on staff or when you're uh, identifying potential coaches, what, where do you start in that process and how do you go about playing? That? Yeah, it's, well, it's got to be, uh, you know, what's their body of work? What's their record? Um, are, are they run a clean program, um, recruiting philosophies, uh, what, what kind of offenses and defenses or whatever, if we're going to get specific on football, that all comes in. Uh, staff and all that. Uh, and the way I like to do this is, um, once the season starts, very seldom I'm, I'm there to support. And whoever you hire as assistants, that's your responsibility. Uh, then we'll talk at the end of the year and we'll review the season. And uh, do you want to make any changes? Um, I, I, I would suggest maybe you make some changes. Uh, these kind of things that uh, you know we need to talk about. But for me to be in someone's ear, all through the season um, isn't, isn't going to really help things, I don't think. If there needs to be a change, I'm not a guy that ever changes coaches mid-season. I don't think anything comes out of that. And the, and the, the ones that suffer are the student athletes. Gosh, so what are we going to do? They lose focus. And remember, focus is so important <clears throat> in athletics. You've got to have that focus, no distractions, be the best you can be, and we'll talk about it when, when the dust settles. So, just obviously, you just said it. I just want to make sure that Mike Riley is not going to be removed before the end of the season. After the end of the season, you're going to re-look at the whole football program as a whole and then make your judgments then. Well, I'll, I'll be taking notes along sure, the way, sure. but uh, I, don't think, I don't think anything is really accomplished, and I never have, of uh, dismissing a coach during the season. Um, Again, because of distractions and lack of focus, um, it can be done 
pretty soon afterwards, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, better have a plan in place of where you're going because uh, in, in this profession, if there's several jobs open, uh, it, it's, it's, it's like uh, everybody's coming <laughs> to everybody's front door. So I like to be very organized in that regard. I, I will tell you this, and, uh, and you probably should know it, um, in my desk at uh, Montana, top drawer, Oregon and Washington State, I have a short list in both football, men's and women's basketball, of who I would be interested in uh, if I had to make a change. And there's lots of reasons for changes. Some are um, not getting the job done. The other is maybe moved on to the NFL or the NBA. So there's lots of different reasons. But who, okay, bam, I'm surprised. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to the Boston Celtics. Oh gosh, what am I going to do? I, I've got that short list and I'll have one here too. Who are your real mentors that you kind of lean on for big decision advice? Pretty much me. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I got to say, uh, <clears throat> here it w that we got a wealth of, um, of people that could be helpful. And of course, uh, the one that, that I would love to talk to and just in regards to getting a pulse and a uh, tap into uh, his experience and knowledge of Nebraska is, uh, is Coach Osborne. Uh, I'd be a fool not to do that. Um, and then, you know, former athletes and others that uh, have been around, I, you know, that, that they will all be very valuable uh, in regards to uh, the direction I, I, I would want to go in any sport. But uh, uh, that when the when the decision is made it's me and uh, you know everybody wants to be a part of the hire but nobody wants to be a part of the fire <laughs> and uh, so I just I, I just take care of both of those and uh, I know I have the blessing of uh, of Chancellor Green and also our president uh, in that re in that regard do you know coach Osborne much do you have a history with him at I've, all? I've, I've met him I brought uh, uh, about 2011, I brought uh, our design team down here to uh, uh, look at the football facilities because we were investing heavy, uh, and and uh, we got we got a private plane, and I took the architects and and uh, contractors and others, some people on my staff, and hit hit um, six six different places in three days, and the first stop was here. And so uh, I stopped in, had a nice visit with Coach, and uh, you know I've always admired him. Uh, watched a lot of those Oklahoma and Nebraska games, and he was on the sideline and uh, being very successful, I might add. So uh, I do know him. I, re I respect him, uh, and I'm very glad that he's here. And I hope that uh, he would uh, would not have a problem with me. Uh, drawing on, on those things from him. I know Coach Leach uh, has resurrected Washington State football, but you took a chance on him when other people wouldn't have. Yeah. What was your conversation with him over the last 48 hours about leaving? Uh, well, nobody has known until our press conference. And uh, um, I, uh, as I went to turn my phone off, I saw that I had a, a text from him or a message, but I didn't have time. Um, uh, like so many other things, and, and like my current situation with uh, the chancellor and president, uh, Mike and I connected. I thought he was a good fit at Washington State um, for a lot of reasons. I think I, I talked about it, but um, uh, you know that place is in good shape, and, and I don't know if there's much more I could do there, and uh, and opportunity here and that's this is where I am but um, I'll be interested to see it again I didn't mention any of this out of respect for the chancellor and president and also because I didn't want to lose focus with with my people and distractions so um, I don't know we didn't play very well last Friday Friday night so maybe I should have mentioned something I don't know but uh, I think I did it the right way Hey, Bill, you talked about wanting to be uh, really accessible. Was that a big part of the discussions during the interview process about this person being up front and being that, that face for the athletic department? Well, I brought it up yeah. because that's my management style. And uh, 
Um, I'm a people person. I'm a son of a politician. Uh, and I like to be in groups. And I like the media. Uh, I'm, I, I, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, but for right now, I really do. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm content with the fact that this is a, a Bill Moose type of place where people um, reach out to others and there's good communication lines and uh, you can tell a story here or there like John Deere versus Case IH, <laughs> Lucchese versus uh, Tony Lama Boots, we can go through them all and probably will. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Justin's a good one. Um, so. Uh, it's it's uh, again it's gonna it's it's just gonna be a, a lot of fun for Kendra and me. We're looking forward to it. Did you? Yeah. you, 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 you okay. Thank you. Any questions?